こんばんは。Hello, my name is Dave and I like to make things. And my favorite way of making things is taking something old, something that was junk, and making it into something new. My concept for tonight is before and after. I started blacksmithing when I was very young, and I made things out of iron and steel for many years. And now I'm focusing on making art knives and traditional cooking utensils. Sometimes my wife works with me. She likes to make handmade metal buttons and accessories. I enjoy working with hand tools and traditional methods, and I like to work with natural materials, and I really like finding something that someone else threw away and turning it into something useful and interesting. So, tonight I want to share a little bit of that process with you, and I'm going to take you through one of my recent projects step by step and show you before and after. For each of the pieces that goes into that project. So, on the left, you can see what I started with, and on the right, you can see the finished knife. Let's rewind to the beginning. To make something out of steel, you need fire. In Japan, we can buy softwood charcoal, but in Canada, we have to make our own. So, we use scrap wood and a charcoal kiln that we built. And we cook it, chop it up, and sort it, and then we can use it for fuel in the forge. Blacksmiths have always made their own tools, and this is another opportunity to reuse some scrap metal and turn it into something useful. This is a Japanese style hammer that's specially made for blade smithing. My favorite material for making blades is old farm equipment. A harrow is like a rake for breaking up the soil, and the steel is very tough. It makes an excellent knife. Everything is hand hammered, and the polishing is all done by hand. I'm very interested in studying the traditional construction of a Japanese knife because every part has a specific purpose, and the design has been tested for hundreds of years. I think this is a good foundation for my work. I really enjoy the, the story of each piece that I put into one of my knives, and I like to use things that surprise people. This is a nickel silver spoon plated with silver, but it became the seppa, the washer, for this knife. About 20 years ago, I found a partly fossilized cow bone in the forest on my grandfather's farm. I kept it in a box until now. I really like the way the color and the texture of the cracks show the age of the bone. It was difficult to work with, but it's a really interesting addition to this project. Some of the techniques of Japanese knife making require specialized tools that are difficult to find. Fortunately, blacksmiths can make tools. This is a type of chisel that's rounded and curved. For making the inside of the handle and the scabbard. I like to work with natural materials and stay away from harsh chemicals whenever I can. One of the ways to do this with an art knife is to make traditional rice paste glue called sokui. The secret is the best tasting rice makes the best glue. Oishi desu! Most of the wood for my projects comes from other woodworkers. Often, when it's too small for them to use, I can still use it. One of my goals is to build things so well that people will want to take care of them, and so that many years later, my art will still be around. I want to build future antiques. This is another type of glue that I use. It's made from Matsuyani, which is pine resin, and it's mixed with beeswax and oil and charcoal powder. It's a very interesting glue that gets sticky when it's hot. And turns hard when it's cool, and you can reuse it as many times as you like. There are so many interesting and beautiful natural materials in the world. We need to take care of them and use them well. I think many things have been forgotten, and we can learn a lot from the people of the past about how to manage energy and resources and how to make things with our hands. 
This is a small but very important part of the knife. The bamboo peg holds everything together and its strength is the strength of the knife. This one is made from an old chopstick. Did you know that even the way the peg is turned is important for strength when you put the knife together? Sometimes we feel like shiny and new is the best, but I think things that are old are very interesting. This pear tree shows its age with color and texture and makes a much more interesting piece of wood for the saya. The lines on the pear wood reminded me of clouds, so I used the same spoon and cut out a small crescent moon and put the moon in the sky. The texture on the surface of the moon was made with a small hammer, and its stem was glued into a hole in the wood with kusune. So this is the finished Mikazuki Kotanto. You can see the hamon on the blade, the clay temper line, and all the steps that you just saw. All the pieces are put together as one complete work. Thank you very much for watching my presentation. And please think of some ways that you can try some creative recycling. If you want to see more details about this project or some of my other work, please visit islandblacksmith.ca. Arigatou gozaimashita.